What up YouTube, welcome to another one of my videos. Basically today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to overclock RAM and like what everything means and what it does. So before we begin, before you do anything, first thing what you're going to want to download is this program called uh, CPUZ. Pretty much for all my videos I use CPUZ. It's really wicked. It gives you all the information about your computer. So once you open it up, this basically talks about your CPU. Go up here to your memory tab. Now this gives you pretty much all your information about your RAM, so um, this is pretty important here, like this just gives you your size, which you should know, but uh, this stuff, uh, you probably will know off the bat, like if you built your own computer, you'll know like how fast your RAM is. Now if it's DDR2, it says right up here, the very first value up here is DRAM frequency. And if it's DDR2, you multiply this by 2 to give you your actual clock. So like this is 533 times 2 would be 1066, which I have right now. And if it's DDR3, it's this times 3, etc, etc. Now, that's pretty important, but uh, I'll focus on these things right here for now just a little bit. These basically are your clocks. And whenever someone asks you like your RAM clocks or something, it's always these first four values. So for me it's 55515. And each of these clocks mean and do something, but uh I'll continue what it does in the bio. Like I'll continue telling you what each thing does in the BIOS. But basically, go into your CPUZ and take note of these values. Your DRAM frequency, and if it's DDR2, remember you multiply it by three. And if it's DDR3, I mean DDR2 you multiply it by two. DDR3 you multiply it by three and write down each of your clocks here because if you didn't do anything these here would still be at stock and then uh... we'll go into the bios and then i'll help you a bit more okay what up welcome back um, go into your bios and then uh... go to like your overclocking tab or whatever so um... basically this is for me ai tweaker so remember i said it's i have ddr2 so it's 533 times two that gives you 1066 now this is your DRAM frequency. So basically, this is like um, how fast your your RAM overall goes, right? So obviously, 1066 would be the fastest. Um, like it would give you lower loading times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You'd be able to like get more data through it. But like if you have 800 megahertz RAM, it's fine. But um, basically, overclocking your RAM timings. Um, they won't really speed up your uh, your loading times I didn't find, but they definitely make your computer jumpier. So like when you're at your desktop and you're trying to open up like Photoshop or something, you're, like your windows will open up a lot faster. Now uh, this is pretty much, I believe this far is the same for Intel or AMD CPU, so I'm not going to get into Northridge, but it's the same for uh, DRAM. So basically find something that lets you change your time. So this is your DRAM timing configuration for me. So when you open this up, it gives you this. Now, this is why I said take note of your stock clocks, because normally it would just be sitting at auto. These would all be auto, and you'd just be like, what the fuck? So basically, take note of your stock times, because if you lower them too much, then you'll basically be fucked. I found this uh, this article on Maximum PC, their November 2008 article. I was going through them, and it actually had a wicked thing explaining it. So it's like... It said, uh, think of your RAM as like a shelf of books in a library. I Actually, I drew it out right here. So basically, think of it as like a shelf of books. So like, you have all these rows, like they'd be stacked up, up and up, but this is just looking at one row. So basically, this would just be like, uh, like if you're waiting here, you want the library, like think of it as a library, you want, you're standing here and you want a librarian to find a book for you and then she has to come back and give it and then you can go, right? And that corresponds with these values here. So um, basically there's ones called the TCRD, which is basically the second value. Remember I said it's the first four? It's the second one. This TCRD is the time that the librarian can take going up and down this ladder to try to get to the row where the data or your books uh, stays. So that's your second value. And then, once she gets to your right row, you have another one called the TRAS value, which is how long she can linger trying to find your book. That one here is your fourth value, where for me it's set at 15. That's how long she can chill going back and forth here. Now, once she's found the book, 
she's still on this ladder, right? So then you have another time called the TRP time, which is, uh, what is it? TRP, sorry, I just can't read. That's your uh, third value right here. This TRP time is how long she can stay on the ladder. So like once she found the book, she's on the ladder, she goes down this ladder. That's your TRP time, right? And then your very, very top one, the first one, is, uh, it's called TCL. That's once she gets to the bottom of the ladder, she has to make it back to you to give you your book. So this one, I find, it's your first value. I find this one uh, gave me the most performance, like the most jumpiness. I don't know if that's the right word or if it's 100% correct, but that's just what I found. This one, your very first value, I find sped it up, the TCL. So uh, if you want to just like take a screenshot or something of that, just to give you what you're doing or to look at that, um, that's basically how it's done. So uh, when you're overclocking these, you don't want to bring them up. You want to bring them down because these are latency timings. Because remember I said it's how long she can take trying to find the row, how long she can take trying to find the book, how long down the ladder and how long to give you your book. Same thing here. So you want to lower these timings, but not too low. Like if I put this, if I put it at like three, really low, or I don't, yeah, I can't lower that. It's already at the lowest. But if I put these really, really low, I don't even think my computer would post. Post is like turning on. Like you should know this. So um, that's basically it. So if you have like a Dell, I'm gonna say it now because I got so many personal messages before. If you have like a Dell or some shitty OEM computer something that you didn't put together yourself or that has a good motherboard in it you won't even be able to do this just turn off this video now and search like fail or something in the search bar just to entertain yourself because this is only for people with aftermarket motherboards and probably aftermarket RAM you don't really need to worry about cooling I'm still using the stock heat spreaders on my RAM there so yeah it's pretty much fine and then same thing like the CPU once you get this uh, DRAM frequency up and your timings, you can uh, adjust this, your DRAM voltage. And uh, if, I don't know what it is for DDR1 or DDR3, but I know for DDR2 it's around like 2.1 volts. Some of them are 2.2, but majority of them are 2.1. Actually, I think DDR3 is 1.5, but I'm not sure. Don't like quote me on this, because I have DDR2. So. Yeah, that's basically it. Just uh, DRAM frequency would like decrease your load times and stuff if it's faster. And DRAM timing, I find, is more effective. That would uh, that would give you more jumpiness at your desktop and doing just regular everyday shit. So that's pretty much it. Go wild. Okay, so now that you pretty much have your RAM overclocked and stuff, you're gonna want to test it like your CPU. So. Google this program is called MemTest, M-E-M test, one word. Uh, download it, and it's basically it runs your like I said, like with CPU stress tests, it runs your RAM at full speed. So uh, just open it up, click start testing, and you just let it sit there for a couple hours. Like here, it said, uh, oh, could not allocate. Are you fucking kidding me? All right, basically when you start it up. Basically, it says down there, it says, like, uh, coverage percent, let it go to, like, six to eight hundred percent, and then, uh, yeah, it's tested all your RAM, and you're pretty much good. If it finds any errors, then, uh, either raise your voltage, or, uh, change your clocks. Basically, what it's doing is it's making sure your librarian gets the right book, and, uh, yeah, you're done.